We have today a special guest, Chris Good from Altstream Solution, and he will tell us about Jira reporting for everyone. I'm really looking forward for that presentation because it's really useful also for my company, which is eBay. So Jira out of the box has quite a few limitations with what's possible with reporting. Um, and there are some features which are often requested and have been for years that uh, many of you who are interested in reporting in Jira uh, will be familiar with. Um, and we just looked at this wish list um, and, and made it all possible out of the box. And that does a few really important things uh, for you and your teams. It makes all your data real time. Uh, it means that you're able to share a, a, exactly what you want, where your teams are working. Um, and it makes it a lot easier for everyone uh, to be able to make the reports for themselves. Some of the more complex solutions that you can do at the moment, things such as EasyBI, are very powerful, very impressive tools. Um, but because they have so many features, they are a little bit difficult to use. Uh, and unfortunately, that means only some people can use them. As Atlassian grows and more and more people are using it, uh, more and more non-technical teams are using it. There's this high demand for reports, so simple that even the CEO can make it himself. So, with that in mind, we, um, we we put together custom charts for, for Jira. The reports we've made uh, are easily uh, makeable in Jira server, cloud, data center, and the same for Confluence. We have uh, server, cloud, and data center versions. So all the features you're about to see have complete parity uh, on both platforms, wherever you're hosting it. Tom, I see you've joined us now. Yep, I got the link on. I'm here. Brilliant. Hi, <laughs> Just in time. Um, do you want to switch over and share? Yeah, I'll jump screen? on. And, yeah, I'll jump on and share now. Cool. So thanks for the for the intro, Chris. Um, I don't know if the, how's this going to work. Can you see my screen there? Yes, we can. Yes, can, I can. Can you see this screen as well? The the change. What can you see now? Sorry. Uh, no, your screen just went smaller. Okay. Well. Okay, that's fine. So let me I was just check. I was sharing the right one. So cool. So hi, Rom. So uh, yep, as Chris has given you a, a, a brief introduction, uh, custom charts is uh, the key thing. It's looks nice and is easy to use. So th those are the main things. It sits in the sweet spot between really complex reporting, easy BI, maybe two in a thousand people in your company know how to use it, and the built-in reporting, which isn't very good and is pretty limited. So the built-in reporting is, you know, looks a bit like this, and uh, for Confluence, it's even even more dated. So um, what I'm going to show you today is the interactive app playground for custom charts. So you don't have to go and install the app to start clicking around and play with it. If you just want to look at the tool and just see if you could benefit from it, then if you go to oldstreetsolutions.com, um, there's the Confl uh, Confluence Jira reporting page for custom charts, and you'll see here there's an interactive app playground in the middle. And what this has is a full... Uh, interactive uh, playground demo environment where you can see how these charts work. So I'll start with while it's here is uh, it's nice to have some pretty um, charts on a page, but what if you want to actually search for data and drill down? So some of the, this is the biggest question we get asked from large customers. It's like, well, how do I drill down into the data? And rather than making it more complicated, we decided to make it less complicated and say, okay, well, actually I want to find things that contain the word, I think it's, T. So this uh, in this demo environment. So there you go. So I know that there is a ticket containing the word T because the demo environment um, gives a set of instructions on how to make a cup of tea. If we click onto this, or tea and biscuits, I think it's, it's very British. Boil water, enjoy the cup, get some testers to help you out. So this gives you a way to have an interactive dashboard where you can um, select different data sets. If we had a custom field here, um, labels or something we could also um, add some different labels and search like that so as you can see it's reduced the search down further so this is how we visualize the charts and how you use them as a team but other, uh, so far nothing's been particularly special what i want to talk to you about is the what, what is special about custom charts the editor so if we jump into the editor here um first of all you'll see it's a, it's a WYSIWYG editor and the idea behind this is that you shouldn't need um, hours of instructional videos. You shouldn't even need me to say anything, really. If you went onto this um, playground now, you'd probably be able to pick it up all by yourself without having to go through the documentation. 
However, if you do need, the link to the documentation is built into the app. And we've just added this uh, colorful splash screen here. And this will load up with every new chart. So it didn't happen on this because it's an already made chart. What you have is here is um, a five-step uh, quick tutorial built into the app for every new user, but also for, for users that maybe only create a chart once a month and might forget some of the features. So what we have is a quick click through where you can say, okay, so first things first is uh, you, search, you search for your issues. So um, some of you may know, having built uh, Jira dashboards or reports before, is that the pain of having to have saved filters already made. So if you make a quick chart, you have to go make a filter, save it, share it with the right people, and then add it to a chart, uh, a gadget. And you know, heaven forbid you have to actually copy that uh, dashboard because what will happen is you'll have all these filters and everything set up. And then if you want to copy it for a new team or as a template, well, then you have to copy every individual filter, rename, edit, set permissions. So, so there's dozens of steps just to simply copy a chart. Um, what you can do with custom charts is use advanced JQL or JQL directly in the search bar. So you don't even need to have the filter saved in advance. And also you can see here simple search and simple search gadget. If you, um, if there was one on the dashboard, you would just select it from this list and it would use that as the source. So even if your users don't know JQL, they don't have to know any information, they can just start searching right away. So let's jump back to save filters and we'll search for all issues again. So pulling this back up, next thing is, um, the chart by fields and the count. So this is what makes custom charts quite, quite powerful is that you have a large number of custom fields. This supports lots of service desk fields as well. For example, like satisfaction is one of the fields and um, lots of request channel types, request participants, customer request types, really useful for reporting on support tickets. And if you don't find what you want, like date fields aren't currently supported, but they will be very soon. You can use custom JQL and save filters directly in the search. And I'll show you, I'll show you how to do that in a second. Going across here, we've got count. So most charts, and let me just hide this. So you can see that the impact this is having. So most charts um, that come in Jira are just based on issues. So you just get your issue count. But what if you want to see if you're tracking story points, for example, the different story points per status in your current sprint, really useful chart. Show me story points per status. Show me the percentage of all the story points in the in the sprint. This is what you do. You can also do uh, time spent if you wanted, as well as any number field, any number field that you can create in Jira, um, and also scripted fields. If you have any complex script runner or uh, 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 Jira workflow, um, Jira miss custom field, sorry, uh, as a scripted function, then you can have that as well. So it's really powerful. Um, and I'll just show you that here. This has got the number two for every field. So it's just adding it up. It's just a little calculator. Okay, so that's how you pull data into the chart, but let's see how the chart actually works. So there is a set of instructions directly in here um, and we'll go through this now. So what you've got is the uh, ability to drag and drop to reorder. You can change the color. You can show and hide the segments as well as rename them. So let's jump into that and see how that works right away. So for drag and drop, Pretty straightforward. You can have big to small if that's how most charts come. But what if you want it in process order? In this case, I want it well, I'll backlog first. I want done to be there, probably closed at the bottom, in progress, in review, like that. Now, I don't want to see closed on this chart, maybe because it's not needed, but I don't want to have to edit the filter to change that. So all I have to do is click the hide segment button and it's gone. So the data still exists, but it's hidden from the view of the chart. Okay, so what about if I want to merge some segments together? Well, you can see here you've got in progress and in review. Well, what if I, I don't need to see that on this particular chart? I want them to be merged into a single grouping. So without having to do anything, um, no scripting, no custom coding, I'm just gonna type in in review here and you can see it's come up and it's already being used in a different segment. And when I click it, the previous segment got merged into this one. So now it's merged as a single segment. And okay, we've got the, the, the two names here, in progress and in review. But what if you want to rename that? So all we do is click on the little pencil to edit the name, and we're going to set, and we're going to call it WIP for work in progress. And there you go. You can see on the chart now it's called work in progress, and if you hover, you can see the underlying statuses. Cool. And then finally, just to show you, it's as simple as just changing the color. If you do know the hex code, you can type it in, so you can have consistent branding, but you can just select the color from the list as well. 
Cool. So that's a load of information I've gone through so far. Any questions at the moment? Uh, so maybe I will remember that we, we will ask all the questions after the presentation because mm -hmm. I need to promote everyone to be panelists. So if you somebody has any question, please use Q&A and we will check it. And after the presentation, I will promote everyone because right now they can only listen to you. Yeah, that's fine. So if you do have any questions, anyone at all, please you know, mention them in the chat and I'll go through them at the end then. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Cool. Okay. Please continue. That's all right. So call on patient to go through. Um, a chance for a, a quick break then. So uh, 2D table example. So this um, this here is everything I've shown you so far was with the, the, the pie chart, uh, the bar chart, the pie charts. These are all showing the, the same sets of data, um, one dimensional data. So if we switch, there's a few display options. For example, you can hide the zero counts. Um, you don't have to see the percentages. So there's a few display options and we're gonna be adding more. Um, but that's all one dimensional data. What if we switch to two dimensional data? And let's jump over to the table here, the, the example. So this is a 2D, 2D table. And you get these in Jira, these two dimensional filter statistics out of the box, uh, but they're quite limited. So again, um, you can do everything you just saw the grouping, the drag and drop, the change color, everything, but have it on a table. And if the colors are too much for you, you can hide them as well. So it can become a bit of a rainbow. You can get rid of that. You can also just select counts. So you can see here, very simple table, custom order, everything you want to see, but really simple to make. And again, you just select them from here. Okay, so everything I've showed you, that's, that's quite a lot of features, but what if, it's, what if it's not enough for you? And this is where custom JQL comes in. So custom JQL is for the use cases where you uh, don't have, a, the chart options are too simplistic. You don't just want status, you want some clever, um, query about status, status only for this category, only for this custom field. Okay, great. Well then what you do is you uh, select custom JQL or save filter, but we're gonna use custom JQL. And then you just add segments and here we're gonna start typing and it's got a full autocomplete um, JQL input box with uh, proper validation and everything directly here. So you can create fully custom segments um, even and it'll show you the JQL here, but you can rename them to whatever you want. Again, so this is when you um, have the situation where you, you can't create it using the basic options, the advanced options, custom JQL here means that you can do pretty much anything. If you can write a JQL query for, for the data you want to see, then you can put it on a chart. There's no limit after that. And going against what I said at the start about saved filters, if you do have a bunch of saved filters, you can pull them straight in. So you can select save filters and pull those in like this. And then just to combine those two pieces together, you can do a two dimensional table with a mixture of standard fields and custom or saved filters to get, to, to, have, to have a lot of fun, to get pretty complex with, with what you can display. So now you can have status by custom filters or custom JQL. So, Pretty, pretty powerful features, but in a, in, a, in a nice, easy packaging. Okay, and then uh, finally, for all the features that are available today, uh, everything you've just seen is available on Confluence. So it's a standalone app. So Jira and Confluence, they're not dependent on each other. So if you install it on Confluence, you don't need to buy the Jira app. And it uh, allows you to put a Confluence macro uh, on a page. And when you open the editor, you'll see it's exactly the same as everything you've just seen so far. Uh, except directly inside of Confluence. If that's where people want to see the reports, uh, right now it requires you to have a Jira license to view, um, but I'm gonna quickly jump across now to show you the future. So this, everything you've seen is where we are today, but let's jump across, um, hopefully you can see this, and see um, the features that we've got coming out. So this is everything you've seen so far, and I've just shown you this, I've just shown you this, Cool, so stacked and grouped bar charts. This is very, very close to being released. Uh, we're working on the final touches of the, the acceptance testing this week. And as you can see, it's conceptually, it's not actually very far off from the two dimensional table. Effectively, a, a stacked bar chart like this is saying, okay, well show me everything into do in progress and done. Well, we've already got that. And then show me it broken down by priority, highest, medium, low. 
So you can actually see that this is just a, a two-dimensional table. I, I can't actually see the, uh, the stacked bar charts there, Tom. That's, fine. So that's what I was asking before, okay. sorry about if you could see my screen. <laughs> so this won't let me share um, that screen, unfortunately. So um, I'll just say that it, it allows you to, to do that. Um, I can try and share a different screen, but it's unlikely. Um, While you try that, we have a couple of good questions. Uh, someone's asked, uh, how does this work with next gen projects? Can you see that stack bar chart now? Yes, I can, yes. Okay, so anyway, this is what I was saying, sorry, talking about is that the idea that you have a stacked uh, or grouped bar chart. Um, yeah, so next gen projects, we actually built, the whole app has been built cloud first. So I can show you, uh, there's some really funny examples I've got of um, next gen projects do not work at all with the built-in um, JIRA reports. So for example, if you have three next gen projects and you have a pie chart, it will have and it will have status to do, status to do, status to do as three separate segments. It doesn't merge them together. So it's, it's really difficult to use the built-in reporting, but custom charts um, just gets over all of that. It, it groups, as you can see, grouping. So it groups status together. It does that automatically. You don't have to do that manually. Um, also with next-gen projects, each custom field is unique to the project, which means that if you wanted to report, if you had a, a cost field in five different next-gen projects and you wanted to report on all of them at the same time, well, with the built-in reporting, you can't do that because those are five different fields. But with custom charts, what we've done is added a simple option where if you click on a field and select it as a chart by option, um, if there are multiple fields with the same name, for example, you've called them cost in every next gen project, you can just click a, a little checkbox pops up that says use um, merge all fields with the same name. So you can report across multiple next gen projects. It's built cloud first to allow that. Cool, okay, so jumping through, then this is the, the stacked and grouped bar charts, as I was mentioning. So again, you can see it's pretty much just a 2D table with the data displayed high, medium, low, the same as if they were rows and columns. So this is really close to being done. We're just working on the styling to make sure it's, it looks nice like this. Cool, um, jumping through again. So one of the, the, the features that's missing at the moment is date fields, and this is a natural progression from what we've been doing so far. Uh, and you can see you'll be able to select a grouping, say months, and you select between two dates. And what it will effectively do is create data segments for each month, and you'll be able to select the colors, not the order because it's date, so hopefully you want it from newest to oldest. Um, but if you are uh, finding it a bit dizzying with the, the rainbow of colors, you can also lock them as well. So this is something we'll be adding as a feature, particularly for date fields. So that if you do have, for example, group by day, uh, group by day for an entire year, you'd have 365 bars, which is very uh, possible. You can easily do that with, um, uh, with custom charts, except you don't want all those colors. So this gives you that power. Cool. Okay, so uh, moving on then, we'll have uh, line charts. So that'll be the next feature that gets released because um, as you can see, it's an extension of the date fields. Okay, so going a bit more Bit further afield. Um, what about sharing these? So we do plan to have the ability to just um, download, save as picture, save as PNG, export to Excel, but what we're also going to be adding is this gadget called a share dashboard gadget. So if you have these on, on a dashboard and you want to share them as a, as a link or just share it in an email with somebody, a different team, different company, someone in, the, in your company that doesn't have uh, the correct access to Jira, well you'll add this to the dashboard. And then when you edit it, you'll see you can select which custom charts you want to share. And you'll just select those and build it just like you would a Jira dashboard. And then when you share this custom charts link, this example is on cloud, but it will work the same on server just with your URL. Uh, you can then share this and it will only share the data as you see, they see it on the chart, but it means that you can share it with people that don't have that level of access. Okay, so uh, just coming to the comparison part now is saying that this is what Confluence looks like right now. It's June 2020, and if you install Confluence, these are the reports that you get, which might, might be okay, but if you want to you know, be, be proud of what you're showing to your managers and your teams, maybe this, these reports aren't for you. Um, custom charts, these are the, this is the exact same report. That's the old one. This is custom charts showing identical sets of data, um, slightly more with the controls, but reordered, colored, Consistent, colors, consistent colors every time was the first feature we added on custom charts when we built it, is that you want these colors to be the same, not like they are on during Confluence random. That's not actually that helpful. 
Cool, so that's Confluence. And then finally, the feature on Confluence that we're also working on is called user impersonation. And this is the, the concept of, well, you install it on Confluence, but not everybody has a JIRA license and not everyone has the correct permissions in JIRA. So this will allow you to say, okay, well, I don't care about everyone else's permissions. Every time this page loads, load the chart as if it was Tom. And that means that it doesn't matter who sees it, they'll load the chart and say like, oh, they see exactly what you see. And that will get around um, a lot of the problems with licensing and uh, permissions. That also does create some other uh, issues, obviously, with security and making sure that people can't just say, oh, today I'm going to create a chart and I feel like being admin, so I'm going to put admin in. So obviously we're going to put a lot of permissions in place around that to stop people, um, to, to only allow very specific people to use this feature, but it will be very helpful. Uh, and then finally, the, the admin settings. So we're adding these um, fast at the moment, but these are the ones that we have today. And this, um, the custom charts auto refresh, as Chris was saying, it's a, a living dashboard that keeps up to date. But on, pretty la on large systems, you may not want that as a feature if you're worried that it's going to slow the system down if they're creating, if people have created large searches. So you can globally change the auto refresh interval and this will affect every chart, every chart that's currently loaded and every chart that will be created. So it's not just, you don't have to worry about doing this straight away because if after a month you realize you want to, you want to restrict this or turn it off, it will by default turn it off on then all existing and current charts. So it will, it will work that way. And also the maximum number of issues. So this is kind of a good housekeeping, um, a housekeeping tool is to say, just because you can run a chart a search that returns a million issues and then only show one column on a chart, that's not very efficient. You don't need to download all that data just to display a small amount. So putting this, this limit in will decrease the load on your JIRA instance because it won't even start loading um, issues if that the number that's returned is too high. So really good for rate limiting and control on data center instances. Uh, and then finally, from a branding point, you can you can set colors. Um, sorry, I've got to go get that. But you can set colors. And that is my final point, Chris. Brilliant. Thanks, Tom. So yeah, I think the other good question we had was about uh, Jira Service Desk. Um, and yes, uh, we have presented recently um, about how well the charts work with Jira Service Desk. One thing they do struggle with uh, is SLA reports. Uh, I know they can get quite complex because then you're looking at shifting two-dimensional data over time. So we're not quite there yet, but we do have um, quite beautiful dashboards. Let me pull up an example to show you. Uh, at some service desk dashboards we've made. Okay. You got an example of the uh, service desk dashboards, Tom? Because that was another one of the questions. Yeah, so I can show you. Put up onto my. Oh, I can't share my whole monitor. I have to share individual screens. One sec. Um, so this is the, um, can you see my screen there? Yes, I can see. Cool, so this is the, the old street. This is the, the dashboard that I sit and look at all, all day long. This is our support, general support dashboard. Uh, and you can see here we have, we're using all the chart types. We, we don't just talk about it. We actually use them, all of them. Um, you can see here the 2D table is really nice because I can see every app. We've given it its acronym, some grouped apps. And I can see, okay, cool, there's two tickets in triage for this app, one for this, and I can see the different statuses as well. And if I want to reduce that and see, I will actually only want to see it for certain assignees, for example, uh, apps like me, uh, which is I'm logged in as this apps user, you can see that now this table, all the charts are updated and that's only showing issues for me. And this is dynamic, so any everyone in the team has access to this dashboard and they can just type in themselves or um, whoever they are and search, search for different issue types. If you only wanted to see bugs, for example, um, again, jumping down, okay, these are bugs in different statuses, so I would know which ones I'm looking after. Um, again, the request channel type, this is something that's been specifically added. We custom made this to work. So we've got anonymous portal, email portal, Jira, and unknown, I think is it all. Uh, 
Um, but again, this is using custom JQL down here for request type. Is that um, a custom field as well? Yeah, so that, this one, I forget why this is set up quite like this. Um, oh yeah, this is just set up like this because um, I wanted to do, uh, I wanted to bunch these together. So I was just doing it as a test, but you can see how um, all the colors are still there and all consistent. So when we do uh, reset the search here, it's now going to reload back to where we were at the start. So this is how I use it as a live support dashboard. The one piece we're missing, you can see this is these two at the bottom, unfortunately are still built in Jira reports, but this, this is the point. We've, we started at the very start of custom charts. We just had this, the pie chart, and we've filled out all the rest of the dashboard. And now we've just got these last two to finish. Uh, and then we'll have a full supporting range, uh, support range. But it's, it's very, very close, as you can see. Brilliant. Thanks, Tom. There's another good question. I don't know if you can see them. Asking if you can uh, drill down into any of the links behind the values and, and into the pie pieces. Yep. So I'll show my screen again. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, so that, uh, make sure one screen at a time. Um, yes, yeah, so that's what I was, that's what I did show here when you're on the pie chart. So if you click on any of the pieces, you get taken to the JQL search behind it, showing you all of the issues. So when you say drill down, some people, that can mean multiple things to different people. But um, I see it as what you can do is use simple search to show you everything that contains T, for example, and then drill down by clicking onto the segment that you want. So it's kind of like a two-stage drill down, but it gives you that level of control. So that, that's, that's how we offer that functionality. Cool. Any other, any other questions? I can't see them. So. Uh, okay, Tom. So uh, did we finish with the presentation? Should I promote everyone to the panelists and they can ask directly questions? Yeah, go for it. Okay, perfect. So first of all, thanks for bringing that. It's really cool features. And Thanks. I have one question. How about the permission that are behind the filters that you use inside the dashboards? Because normally if the filter is restricted, as for example, to only my team, yeah. it's displayed on the dashboard only for my team. Does it same situation for your extension or it works yeah. somehow yeah. differently? Can you oh, tell we, us? If we, if we can get away with rebuilding the entire Jira permission structure, we, we have. So if it, it works exactly the same as the built-in reports do. So if you have a filter that's restricted to only your team, people won't be able to add it. It won't be in the drop-down list. We respect 100% of Jira permissions. You don't have to worry about anything. Oh, that's perfect. Great. Okay, I'm promoting all of you, all of the our attendees. And if you have any questions, just please turn on your mic and ask them. Um, but yeah, if anyone doesn't have any questions right away, what I would recommend, like I said, is um, going to uh, oldstreetsolutions.com and I'll, I'll put the link in the, in the chat right now. So um, hopefully everyone's got that. Uh, and that, that's the link directly to the playground. So if you want to click through all those, those tabs that I just went through on my screen and just start playing around, no installation, no login, no email, nothing. You just zero clicks and you start using it. So there's, there's no barrier to entry for, 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 use, for having a go. Cool. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll relinquish my time then and say thank you very much, everyone, for, for listening to that. So do we have any questions? Looks like I, I covered everything. Hopefully a bunch of people busily playing with the playground right now. Yeah. <laughs> Can we? <laughs> okay. Thanks very much. So, so going once, going twice going triple thanks a lot for being here bringing that wow. all the stuff thank you so we much can click understand. around and enjoy the rest of the day bye bye to everyone cheers yeah i really appreciate your hosting thank you very much guys lovely yeah. to uh, meet the community and uh, looking forward to the time where we can all meet in person perfect and stay safe bye bye stay safe. Thank, you. thank you bye